detectives, it's Detective DPS Amanda here to ask your help with solving another case. So this is our fourth case together and you have done amazingly in helping me out so far and I believe that you will be extremely helpful again today. So let's get right to it and let's look at our clues. So our big clue is of course from Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and our Bible clue is from Genesis chapter 29 verses 1 through 30 and our third clue is this coffee filter. Maybe I ought to find some coffee and make myself a nice cup of coffee while we try to solve this mystery. Either way, let's make our way to the Faith Finders lab to analyze these clues. So here we are in my Faith Finders lab. However, in the transition between my living room and the Faith Finders lab, it appears that I've lost the clues. What would you do if you were in my place? There's a part of me that is freaking out and panicking, but I'm trying to listen more closely to the calm and patient part of my brain that is telling me to relax, calm down, and think. Where did I leave those clues? So I know I had the clues when we left the living room and I thought it would be funny if I actually used that coffee filter to make some coffee. But then I remembered that there was coffee in the kitchen. So I grabbed some coffee, drank it down. I took the coffee, took the clues and I know, oh, silly me, I just set them like right here, just slightly out of sight. So here's our clues. We're good. <sighs> Sometimes it helps to be patient and think things through rather than just freaking out. So now that we have our clues, let's have a look at them. So our first clue is Galatians chapter five, Verse 22, normally I would have put a bookmark in my Bible so that I would be easily able to find where it was, but I forgot. I, I just simply forgot to put a bookmark in. So I don't know, I guess if I've learned anything from before, it is simply to be patient, right? Not to freak out, but to take my time think about it, and to patiently find where it is. I know it comes after 2 Corinthians, and you know what? I'm right there. I found it super easily. We know that there's the big number five there, and now I will look for the little number 22. Now, I think that we have heard this verse quite a bit, and in fact, you may know this verse well enough that you can say it along with me. So if you feel like you know this verse well enough that you can say it along with me, please do. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. All right, sounds pretty familiar. Our second clue is a little bit different though. It is Genesis. And if you remember from last week, Genesis is the easiest book of the Bible to find because it's right at the beginning. So Genesis chapter nine, verses one through 30. And we'll read that in just a minute, but I've been thinking about this a lot lately and I realized that I haven't really told you a whole lot about myself. So, you know that I'm a detective because we solve detective mysteries together all the time. 
you know that I'm a DPS, and a DPS is somebody who works in the church, but what you may not know is that I'm also a mom. I have two children, and I will admit that it drives me bonkers, absolutely drives me nuts when my kids don't clean up their space. And I would imagine that it drives your parents bonkers when you don't clean up your space either. So I'm going to make you a deal. To help your dear patient parents, I want you to take a minute to either pick up five toys or to clean up something around you. Maybe do some light dusting or a little bit of vacuuming. Um, just, just to help out a bit, you know, make things a little bit easier for your parents. Now, of course, I wouldn't make you do that without some kind of reward. So, if you clean up, I will give you a choice of rewards. You can either listen to me read out of the dictionary, pretty good, or we could have a virtual freeze dance party where I'll play some music, we can dance, and then when the music stops, you freeze. I assume that you'd probably prefer the freeze dance party, so why don't you press pause, do your cleaning, and when you come back, we'll have our reward. All right, great job, friends. You have definitely deserved your reward. reward. <clears throat> Mad. Um, to Madden. Silly, mad, akin to foolish, crazy, disordered in mind, completely unrestrained by reason and judgment, incapable of being explained or accounted for, carried away by intense anger. Hmm. It's probably not the reward that you really wanted, was it? I, it's maybe not so exciting to hear me reading out of the dictionary. Um, especially when you put in all that work expecting that I would give you a reward and a reward that you would like. Now, um, I'm thinking of somebody from the Bible who had a very similar situation to this. It's a story about a man named Jacob who fell in love with a girl named Rachel and her dad promised that they could get married. But let's see what happens in the story. So as we said before, it is Genesis chapter 29. And Genesis is very easy to find. And Although our clue is from verse 1 to verse 30, I'm only going to read a little bit of it. So I'm going to start with Genesis chapter 29, verses 18 through 20. And since Jacob was in love with Rachel, he answered, If you will let me marry Rachel, I'll work seven years for you. Laban replied, it's better for me to let you marry Rachel than for someone else to have her. So stay and work for me. Jacob worked seven years for Laban, but the time seemed like only a few days because he loved Rachel so much. Now Jacob really wanted to marry Rachel, but he had to be patient. He had to spend seven whole years waiting and working before he could marry Rachel. I think he would have to really want something a lot in order to work seven years. I wonder what you might be willing to work seven years to receive. Maybe a fancy house? Yeah, maybe. Gourmet mac and cheese? I, I might. A game or a really expensive toy? Maybe if I really wanted it. Seven years, though, is a really long time. For a lot of you, it's maybe as old as you are. 
or maybe close to as old as you are, or maybe it's even older than you are. But let's take a moment, we'll check back in with Jacob and see how things turned out for him. Okay. So Jacob said to Laban, the time is up and I want to marry Rachel now. So Laban gave a big feast and invited all their friends. But that night, he brought Leah, Rachel's sister, to Jacob, who married her. The next morning, Jacob found out that he had married Leah, and he said to Laban, why did you do this to me? Didn't I work to get Rachel? Why did you trick me? And Laban replied, in our country, the older daughter must get married first. After you spend this week with Leah, you may also marry Rachel, but you will have to work for me for another seven years. At the end of the week of celebration, Laban let Jacob marry Rachel. Jacob loved Rachel more than he did Leah, but he had to work another seven years for Laban. Now, how tricky was that? Like, that was even trickier than what I did to you. Jacob was so patient. He waited seven, that many, seven years to marry Rachel, whom he loved. But instead, through some major trickery, Laban switched daughters so that Jacob would marry Leah instead. And to make things even worse, in order for Jacob to marry Rachel, whom he loved, he had to work another seven years. Can you even believe that? He had to work 14, like that's more fingers than I have, 14 years to be able to marry Rachel, whom he loved. Now, I promised you earlier that we could have a freeze dance party. So, why don't you Go pick up another five toys or do another little bit of cleaning and when you're done we will have our freeze dance party all right go clean up for five more toys or one big clean up and then come back here all right friends i hope you're ready for our freeze dance party so how this is going to work is that i will play some music you can't see it, you can only see me unfortunately, but I have some pretty cool moves. And when I stop the music, then you have to stop in whatever pose you're in. And I will too. So let's have our freeze dance party. I think that's pretty good for our dance party. Thank you guys for working so hard for that dance party. I bet you have never worked that hard to play freeze dance before in your lives, have you? Oh, I'm very thankful that you showed patience with me, just like we saw Jacob being patient with Laban. So now we've looked at our first two clues and all we have left now is our third clue. And our third clue was a coffee filter. So I learned this really cool experiment that you can do with a coffee filter and a cup of water. So one second while I get this set up and then we'll do our super cool experiment. All right, so 
welcome back. I have my experiment set up here. As you can see, I have a cup with just a little bit of water in it. And what I did was I cut up my coffee filter so it's in three pieces. I think you could probably cut it into smaller strips if you want, but they should be strips like this. And what I did was in three different colors, I wrote the word patience. So there's a blue one, a black one, and an orange one. I know you're all surprised I didn't put a purple one in, but those were the three colors that I had. So, um, I'm wondering what you think will happen if I take these and stick them in this cup of water. Um, I'll just take a second now to set it up, but I want to remind you that you guys have the materials that you need in order to do this experiment at home as well. So you can take the coffee filter that came in your Bible Detectives kit, and this is not quite sitting how I want it to, but there's one patience. I guess I need to be patient trying to set this up too, don't I? So I've got the orange one in there. We've got the black one that I am just going to put a paper clip on right now. And then I will stick the blue one in there as well. There we go. So they are all in there. They are, um, you probably can't see it very well, but not much is happening yet. The water is just starting to make its way up those coffee filters. And I have a feeling this isn't going to be a very quick experiment. In fact, it might take some patience for us to wait for the results. So instead of making you wait for ages, let's go to our video and we'll come back to this experiment in a few minutes. Welcome to the Awesome Andy Show, the internet show where we dare to build bigger and better than any other internet show. A lot of you watched last summer when I built the rocket-powered tri-ski scooter. Well. As we learned, the Rocket Power Tri Ski Scooter doesn't really work without a lot of snow. All of you who may have built my Rocket Power Tri Ski Scooter last summer, I had no idea that the Rocket Power Tri Ski Scooter was more of a rocket powered catapult when not used on snow. Well, today I'm going to do something about that. Hello, friends. So, what are we up to today, Andy? Well, Remember last summer when I built that rocket-powered tri-ski scooter? I sure do. Who would have known that it wouldn't work without snow? <laughs> well, I'm glad you had your helmet on. Huh, me too. We need snow to prove that the rocket-powered tri-ski scooter will work. Andy, there really isn't a lot we can do about that. It hasn't snowed yet, and we'll just have to be patient. Patience, Smations. We need snow, and we're going to get snow now. Andy, I'm not sure if that's such a good idea. Last summer you tried your scooter and you almost launched yourself to Oklahoma. See, that's because I didn't have a plan, Cammy. Today, I have a plan. And it's gonna be great. Andy has a plan? Why am I even more worried now? Oh, don't you worry. It's gonna be totally fine. Alright, let's get it over with. Let's hear the plan. We're gonna make our own snow. I went onto the old interwebs and bought myself an awesome Andy's Mr. Blizzy, which came with these great flavors like cherry and grape. I also ordered some ice on the internet. Okay, that's not such a bad idea. I mean, I can't see how it would hurt you, and I mean, it may take a lot of ice, but let's give it a shot. <laughs> let's make our own snow. One, two, three.
And we're done. Wow. That took me forever, and we're all out of ice. Kind of disappointing. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to work. But look on the bright side. We get to have snow cones. <laughs> oh, you're right, Cammie. This is the best experiment ever. <laughs> oh, brain freeze. Oh, oh, oh. I had an idea when I had the brain freeze. What? Look, we need snow. So let's build a pneumatic cannon to launch some of this shaved ice into the clouds. It'll cool down the clouds and remind them how to snow. I don't think that's how weather works, Andy. Oh, forget weather. We need snow and I'm gonna make it snow. Uh, did I? Wow, that looks pretty impressive. Right? Check, how does it work? Check this out. So this chamber here gets filled with air from this bicycle pump. I fill up the chamber with air, load some shaved ice into the top of this, then turn this valve and the compressed air will launch the snow into the sky, making it snow. I'm pretty sure that's not how weather works, but let's give it a try. Hey, that's the spirit, Cammie. Let's go. I'll just fill this with some shaved ice. I'll fill up the chamber. And I'll run for safety. Cammie? Science. It's ready. Now I just need to flip the switch. Let it snow. <sighs> Cammy, you were right. That's not how weather works. That's all right, Andy. It will snow. We just have to be patient. But I want to ride my rocket-powered tri-ski scooter now. Andy, you always come up with great ideas. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But what's so great about you is that you keep coming up with new ideas. And sometimes a great idea won't work because it's just not the right time. Have patience, my friend. Snow will come. But for now, let's just trust God and build the fun stuff that we can use right now. You're such a good friend, Cammie. And you're right, I will be patient. It'll be best to wait for the snow. But while we wait, I've got a great idea for the next show. Join us next time for when we build a pneumatic cannon that will allow Cammie and I to play ping pong from across the city. It'll be ballistic. Uh, Cammie, where are you going? Come on, I promise it'll be safe this time. Ooh. So it seemed like Andy had a really hard time with waiting. And his ideas on how to hurry things along, they weren't really the greatest. Except for the snow cone idea. That was a great idea. I could go for a snow cone right about now. A purple one maybe. No, focus Amanda. Okay, we're not talking about snow cones, even though they are delicious. But we're talking about Andy. Andy wanted snow so that he could use his rocket-powered tri-ski scooter invention right now. But Cammy said sometimes a great idea won't work because it's not the right time. It's a hard lesson to have to learn and sometimes we want things to happen at our speed. And it's hard to be patient and wait for the right time. Although we don't always get to do what we want right when we want to, we can trust in God and ask him to give us the patience to wait for whatever might happen. Speaking of waiting, you've been very patient in waiting for the results of our experiment. Let's have a look at what happened. So our first strip here is a little bit stuck, but our first strip, that's what happened to the orange. It kind of, I hope you can see it, it kind of faded the colors up a little bit, but still orange. Our blue one to faded the colors up there a little bit. That's our blue one. And for our black one, look what happened.
still black, but you can see that there's some blue and some red in there too. Um, it's surprising actually to see the changes that the black strip went through. Um, it, it had all kinds of colors in it and the water helped to bring those colors out. It was a surprise that we had to be patient for, but in the end, I think the results were worth waiting. Now, speaking of being patient, I also found something else that was attached to our experiment. It was a piece of fruit and it has the word patience on it. I bet we can add this to our clues. So let's think about this. Okay, we read our main clue, our clue from Galatians, and it talked about patience as being one of the fruits of the Spirit. And then we found this fruit with the word patience on it. We read our Bible story from Genesis, and we heard about Jacob's patience and how he worked for 14 years in order to marry Rachel, whom he loved, and how patient he had to be. In our video, we saw Andy, who was definitely not patient. We saw that his lack of patience provided a great deal of difficulty for him, and in the end, he ended up having to be patient anyways. And finally, our coffee cup experiment showed us the rewards of being patient and how sometimes we can receive something we never expected through patience. Now let's be patient, friends, as we try to use our clues to solve this case. Wait a minute. Patience. That seems to be like a common thing all the way through. And this fruit, patience, is like a fruit of the Spirit. And just like the other fruits of the Spirit, we can add it on to our tree. Whoops. Now on our tree, as you will remember, we have love, we have joy, look at them love and joy, we have peace, and now we will add patience to our tree as well. Let's see if I can get a good angle. There we go. And with our tree, we can be reminded that God gives us patience, and we can pray for patience in all circumstances. We can remember the patience that God gave to Jacob and how he showed that when he was working to be able to marry Rachel, whom he loved. We can remember patience when we think of Andy and how he had to learn patience when things weren't going according to his plan. Just the same as how we have to pray for patience when things aren't going according to our plan either. But, most of all, we are reminded that through the gift of patience, we can receive rewards that are greater than what we could have imagined. It looks like we did it, friends. We solved our case. Let's grab our party hats and let's celebrate. We did it, guys. We solved the case of patience. Now, I couldn't have solved this mystery without your help. I hope that you can be patient and wait, wait a whole nother week when we will have a new mystery to solve. But before we go, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you have given us the gift of patience. Whenever we feel like things aren't going how we want them to, help us remember to pray 
to be patient, and to look forward to what you have in mind for us. Give us the gift of patience and help us to see your goodness in all circumstances. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me once again, friends, and I look forward to seeing you next week as we have a brand new case for the Bible Detectives. We'll see you then.